welcome, good afternoon, good evening uh, to Latin American Studies 201, Popular Culture in Latin America with me, John Beasley Murray. And I'm very pleased today to be talking to Roger Canals from the University of Barcelona, uh, an anthropologist, a visual anthropologist who has worked for many years now on the cult of Maria Leonza in Venezuela, also in, in Barcelona, uh, as, as it happens in his made films. Uh, about this. But I wonder, uh, Roger, again, thank you so much uh, for doing this for this conversation. If you could start by ter telling us a little bit about the cult of Mary Leonza, its uh, history and, and some of its characteristics. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you today. The cult of Maria Leonza is a fascinating religious practice uh, born in Venezuela out of the encounter between three main cultural sources, that is, the Indian past, the Afro-descendant religions brought by the enslaved people during the conquest, and finally Catholicism. So these three cultural sources mingled and gave birth to new religious practices to which other uh, religious um, cosmologies added, like spiritism, occultism, and different kinds of even new age um, religious practices. So it is a, a um, religious cult, which is not homogeneous. I mean, there is no uh, a single way of practicing it. What we encounter is uh, plurality of religious groups. Each one practices in this cult in a different manner. And uh, one of the, I think, the characteristics of this cult is, I mean, the creativity in it. I mean, you see new spirits emerging all the time, new religious practices, new images as well. Um, so it is a, it's a fascinating capacity of adaptation, of giving response to the challenges of each historical time. And the most important figure of this cult is the goddess Maria Leonza, a female goddess, who is imagined and represented in very different ways. And the most, the two most important representations are the one which is called La India, the Indian. So an Indian woman riding on a taper, the taipu, yeah, this, this mm -hmm. animal, and holding a pelvis bone, which is a fascinating figure, almost realistic. And then the figure called La Reina, the Queen, were in which Maria Leonza is depicted as a white or mixed race, mestiza woman um, with a crown and a, a red rose on her um, chest. So one of the things that, that comes out of what you're saying now and, and, and in your article is um, how very dynamic uh, this practice is. Um, it's relatively recent. You tell us that it's cons consistently incorporating um, uh, new elements, and, and so it can be different and malleable in, in various ways. And Maria Leonza is one of the uh, central figures, and also the, the practice of spirit possession as one of the central practices. I wonder if you could say a little bit uh, about that, and then we can go on to talk about um, the examples and, and your work with and filming and, and thinking through the practice of spirit possession. Well, the practice of spirit possession is a, is a, is a is a classic uh, topic of anthropology. And it is a very a puzzling situation for someone who is not from the same cultural area. The idea is rather uh, simple to explain. Uh, the medium expels his own soul or identity and uh, embodies, accepts the soul of a spirit of a deceased person. And what is totally fascinating in the cult of Maria Leonza is that, for example, you may have the descent, the visit of a spirit who is the spirit of an enslaved person who died during the conquest, a black person. And then this person talks, describes in the first person, so you have a kind of history in the present, uh, in, in the first person, this person talks about the oppression, about the experience of being enslaved during the colonial times in Venezuela. 
but you may have also the, the presence, and here the, the term presence is, is an important one. So the, the possession makes present, makes the past present somehow and permits actual interaction between the living people and the deceased people. So you may have the visit of a malandro, for example, delinquent who was killed uh, in streets in Caracas and who talks about how to protect oneself uh, against crime or give advices. So uh, it, the, the possession ritual is a space where past, present, and future mingle, where you have different historical characters uh, converging and exchanging uh, ideas. And so it has a, a, a important social effect on people. That's uh, that, that's completely fascinating. So, so there's a way to not. I was going to say think through history, but kind of experience as much. The, the question of, of, of presence uh, is so important to uh, a, a sense of this experience of the past uh, incorporated corporeally um, uh, present uh, in in the presence. I feel I'm repeating the the, the question of presence here, um, uh, which is which is fantastic, and um, and different kinds of spirits, as you say. Can um, uh, can manifest themselves uh, through possession, but at least sometimes it is the spirit of uh, Maria Leonza herself. And I feel I should say herself, given this multiple identity um, uh, that you talk about. I wonder if you could say a, a little about that and, and about the um, the way in which it's also a spectacle. This is, a, as you said, this is a social thing. So, for instance, in the example you give us in the article, there's an audience, or, or uh, there are about 20 or so spectators in this in this small house or this little complex of houses uh, in, in Caracas. So, I wonder if you could talk about the possession or spirit possession as, as a as a spectacle, in, in especially in the case of Maria Leonza here. Yeah. Well, thanks for the question. It's a very good one. First of all, I have to say that the descent of Maria of the spirit of Maria Leonza is quite rare. You have to take into account that spirits are divided into a <clears throat> sort of vertical order. And those who have more light, who are more pure, occupy a higher position. And those who, are, who have low light, less light, are more impure, more attached to the terrenal life, um, are in the, at the bottom of this, of this hierarchy. So the spirit of Maria Leonza is a very important one, of course. So she descends very rarely. Actually, I have only witnessed four rituals in which Maria Leonza has manifested herself. And so she, usually she descends either in a young uh, women or in very old people with a pure heart, they say. So... Um, and what about the audience and the spectacle? Here, there is a big, a big controversy within the cult of Maria Leon. Because there are, I mean, we are in a kind of what Mitchell calls a kind of pictorial turn, in the sense that at the beginning of the 20th century until the mid 20th century, these rituals used to take place in domestic space, in a very, in, in a, in a very intimate circles. And then the cult became more popular, more public. And then uh, after the 80s, 90s, the television appeared and TV programs were made. And use, today what we see is that a lot of, lot of believers, of practitioners film with their cell phones, the rituals. Sometimes they upload the rituals on the net, or on social networks like Facebook, Twitter, whatever. So, uh, a range of rituals which were quite secret, so the very notion of secret is being transformed, mm. are um, made visible today. And this goes with a big controversy because not everyone agrees with this idea of publicity. And uh, so there are rituals which take place in intimate spaces and for which, uh, for, uh, for, I mean, for which have to, to, to ask for permission to, to attend. And there are rituals which are much more public. And some believers say that uh, these uh, public rituals that sometimes are made for the television or for the cameras in a way or another betray the, um, the real sense, the real philosophy of the ritual itself. So there is a controversy in terms of the visibility of the cult. And it is important for visual anthropology, of course. 
So, I mean, here we get also to the whole question of um, uh, the image, right? The, the image uh, and, and the role of the image. Um, you reproduce in your article these uh, estampas, these cards, right? And, and we have the image, the sort of ritualized image of the different incarnations of Maria Leonza, and then other figures as well associated with the, um, uh, the cult. Um, uh, one is uh, Afro Venezuelan. I forget what his what, what his name is now. Um, El Negro, El Negro Felipe. No? El Negro and uh, El Indio uh, Guacaypuro. Guacaypuro. Uh, these, the, the, these images, and then uh, there's the sort of added complication with, of you as a as, a, as an anthropologist um, with the with the film camera uh, who uh, you, you who is is trying to record. Uh, and understand some of this, but is given a whole series of, of prohibitions and, uh, as to what can be seen and, and, and what can't be seen, what can be recorded and, and what can't be recorded. I wonder if you could say a little bit more about that and, and how, as you, you were saying in the article and we were talking a little bit before, how perhaps some of the mistakes that you make were actually useful that helped you understand the, uh, what was going on a little bit better. Yes. So every society, every culture, or every re religion has a regime of visibility. So there are some things that can be seen and other things that cannot be seen. And there is a, a particular normativity, let's put it like this, in the act of, of filming, of recording, of making images out of what is visible. And the same goes for the cult of Maria Leonza. So uh, I, from the very beginning, I was interested in making films, and in filming this ritual, but of course have to be honest and have to follow the rules to adapt to the, to the very complexity of the, uh, the, 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 the cultural manifestation that you aim to film. So in order to film these rituals, usually I had to uh, ask for permission and to ask for permission to spirits. First to the members of the group, to the principal medium, but also to the spirits. How you ask permission? So, for example, by smoking a tobacco, you smoke a tobacco, and depending on the age of the tobacco, the medium says, "Okay, the spirits agree, or the spirits do not agree." And there are other divination rules uh, in order to get a response and to know whether you are allowed to film or you are not allowed to film. These kind of procedures are part of the research, are part of visual anthropology. All what you have to do in order to film is part of the cinema, cinematic experience in itself. And then once you get the permission, you can't do whatever you want. We are anthropologists, so we adapt to people. We want to understand them. We want to create an exchange to learn from each other. So for example, in this case, they told me, you can film, but be aware if there's someone possessed by a spirit you can't be just in front of that person. You can't be between the person and the shrine, just cutting the bridge, cutting the link. This shot cannot be done. And then as anthropologists, first as a human being, you have to adapt to these rules, but then theoretically speaking as anthropologists, the question is why I am not allowed to do so. And this is a very interesting thing a, a, that sparks your theoretical imagination out of a mistake, out of a kind of, because at the beginning I wanted to, 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 to shoot, a, 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 but they t tell me, oh, I'm sorry, Roger, very kindly. I mean, these are big friends, but you, you can't film like this. You have to film in another way. So the, the, the final outcome, the film that you see is, is as David McDougall would say, a kind of transcultural cinema. The, the, the final outcome is the, is the result of an agreement in which different ways of understanding cinema, culture in general, are um, concealed somehow. So um, this is the thing, yeah. So I was fascinated by a number of different things. Um, one is the notion that uh, what you're trying to do, and, and perhaps in, in cinema or film more generally, is not just give a record of the visible, but it's also an investigation to the limits of the visible, right? An investigation to what cannot be seen. And in some ways, 
the, the, the notion of medium, of course, is, is, uh, is, has got more than one uh, uh, meaning here, right? You have the me medium who is the person who also incarnates and makes visible a spirit world that cannot be seen. And, and the, the, the camera is, is likewise a medium, a technological medium, uh, which does something similar. And, and the ways in which um, the uh, Maria Leonza uh, cult and, and your work with it uh, makes us think about the way the vision is not simply passive, but the vision is active or an energy. You talk about the cult as being in some ways a sort of calculus, or very interested in the question of, uh, of energy. The, the, the vision recording is not simply passively receiving, but, but also is constructive and, and creative in some ways. I wonder if you could talk about that. Yeah, well, there's different things. It's, I think it's the core of the question. First, the cult of Maria Leonza invites us to think that watching, looking at someone, seeing, as you were saying, is not just receiving external impressions, but projector, projecting internal intentions. So not receiving external impressions, projecting internal intentions. So it's a way of acting, of, of, of acting onto the, upon the world. And uh, because they say that actually the act of seeing affects the object or the subject uh, being seen. Uh, this is how you can understand, for example, the evil eye, the idea that, that there's a kind of witchcraft that can be uh, transmitted through the act of seeing. So of course, when you have a optical device as a camera with an energy, because it has batteries, and a, a camera which reinforces the act of seeing because you have a zoom, you have a lens, you have a lens. So then the dangers that um, uh, involve the act of, of watching at someone, for example, possessed by a spirit, increase. And this increasing uh, makes explicit what usually remains implicit. Mm -hmm. And this is the core of the thing. So I think that it is because I was holding a camera because the danger that involved in the act of seeing was even stronger that the believers made explicit their way of understanding what it means to see and to be seen, which is actually that seeing is a way of affecting, is a way of relating, is a way of being in contact with others. And uh, of course, I mean, the, the notion of medium is a central one. Actually, a ritual is a strategy uh, of medium. This is, is a way of creating bridges, links, to put in contact different agents, deceased people, spirits, um, I mean, uh, uh, practitioners. Uh, so um, a ritual, an altar, for example, a shrine, is also a, a way of, of creating relationships. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a medium in, in this regard. And again, there is a kind of homology, and I like this term, there is a kind of homology between the fact of being a medium or using mediums like images and using a camera, which is also an external device, a mechanical technological one, which is a medium as well, that you use to establish this link, this relationship with other people. So as you and me right now, and with the people who are, who are watching us, we use mediums to be in contact. And this is the whole paradox of medium. It is, a, we use mediums because we are not in contact, but thanks to the medium, we are in contact. So we are at the same time in a, in a kind of distance and in a kind of intimacy. And this is mediumship. That's a fantastic way to end as the, the sun comes up here in uh, Vancouver. And I guess the sun is uh, setting there in Barcelona. We're Definitely. making these, uh, these connections through these medium, these mediums, and through a discussion of uh, Maria Leonza. Roger, thank you so much for this fantastic conversation.